It's time for this. Ah, fuck, it's Gary Oldman. Waffle, the best of the worst. It's cool when you said let's rock because of you. <laughs> I'm always naked. Welcome to Witty Analysis of Feature Films and Light Entertainment Podcast TV Series Episodes Review. Ooh. <laughs> My name's Billy. <laughs> and I'm the one they call Sean. So this is where we um, we usually review two episodes of a TV series. We've been doing Falcon and the Winter Soldier for the past few weeks, and uh, we now hit the last two episodes, episodes five and six. Short little one, this one, wasn't it? Nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're gonna nice and easy. so we're gonna go through episode five truth and episode six one world one people. Um, what we'll do is usually up top we do all spoilers for this. So if you haven't seen them, fuck off. Come back. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, fuck off and watch it. Don't just fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you just if you're not gonna watch it, just stay here. You might as well. Like there's no. But if you want to watch it, it's yeah. But fuck off and then watch it and then come back and then you can listen to this because we're gonna go spoilers right from the off. I do a rapid refresh up top for each episode. Feel free to listen to that because well, it might spoil things. It won't make any fucking sense if you haven't seen the episode. <laughs> oh, and we swear in this, don't we, Sean? Yes, we do. Sometimes. Not often. Sometimes I say cunt. <laughs> hey, the bleeper's back. So, for the um, rapid refreshes this week, Sean, can I have a minute 15, please? <laughs> yes, you may. Because a lot happened in these episodes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's very daunting. Especially when it's something like this and not much is going on. Yeah, it's the f- it's wrapping everything up, isn't it? Cool. So, are we good to go? Yeah. Well, ready? One, two, three, go. Okay, so episode 5, Truth. The previously on reminds us of all the story points they want to hit in this episode. Cap is out for a jog. On your left? No, it's another fucking warehouse. (laughs) With great serum and shield comes great pressure to perform. Bucky shields Falcon and then they're rounding up all the flag flappers. Captain Killbot just wants to explain why he murder death killed that flag smasher. (laughs) Well played, Wyatt Russell. That was a good scene. <laughs> La Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine comes to stir up some shit. Carly thinks it's time. Is a cliched empty gun and the Dora Milaje rock up to take Nemo. Then Sam finds out the episode title from Isaiah Bradley. Sam tries to fix the world, starting with his sister's boat. Bucky's hitting on women more than 100 years his junior again. There's a boat montage. Sad Cap and Shifty Sharon Carter. Bucky anthropomorphizes the shield, then Sam and Bucky finally have that conversation. Sam and Sarah wrap up that storyline before the finale, there's a shield montage, and then somehow the most wanted person on the planet makes it into Central Park, New York to do an arms deal with a Frenchman who wants to kill Uncle Sam. Sam opens the case, and that's the end. Then there's a post credit, Captain Not America invests heavily in his cosplay. The end. (laughs) (laughs) I would have thought such a sense of relief when I get to the end of that. <laughs> so then, um, you might be surprised to hear, really fucking like this episode. Yeah. You know, we were saying last time, like, if if they wrap everything up satisfactorily, then I'll be happy. So this yeah. one, I'm like, they're starting to do something with it. They're actually starting to pay things off, and I felt like yeah. they were setting a load of stuff off stuff up that they were never going to pay off, which some stuff didn't, but not the stuff that I thought they weren't going to pay off. They did come back to Isaiah Bradley. They did come back to Sam's sister's boat, albeit we do much with it. No. But but I I quite liked this one. What did you think? Yeah, it was was a good episode. I mean, it was the least sort of action-packed, this one, I think, out of all the episodes. Maybe I'm boring. Maybe that's why I liked it. <laughs> but um, no, cause you you are right. It was wrapping things up. It was putting a bow on things. It was in preparation for the big bus stop finale episode. It was. So. Yeah, I felt like we were missing something in this because of COVID. I felt like everything would have been more fleshed out, and I would have been more satisfied in the setup. Yeah, and I think it's a weird one because like part of me is like it's awesome that folk are still going ahead with things and still putting things on because you know would be like oh come on where is this I want to watch it I want to watch it but then they're, they're doing it and they're bringing it out and you're kind of like oh I want more <laughs> you can't have it both ways um, but that's that's uh, but, but to me the, I mean I've got written down here in my notes release the Isaiah Bradley cut yes because, <laughs> because he gets such short shrift in this he does <laughs> and he I does. haven't watched um, I haven't watched any more um, Fat Man Beyond with um, Mark Bernard on it you know right. the, um, Kevin Smith podcast and he was saying yeah. what to do Truth is a comic book for Marvel and they wouldn't let him do it because they had something planned I hope it wasn't this 
yeah. that they had planned. Because if this was it, then they wouldn't have been hurt by someone else doing it as a comic book. No. It would it probably would have been enhanced it maybe. It would have, yeah. I mean, or release I it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because I don't really, obviously, I don't read a lot of comics and stuff and comic books. And, well, I say a lot, I don't really read them at all. So it wouldn't have helped me either. It wouldn't have helped or hindered me because I probably wouldn't have read it anyway. <laughs> I'd wait for the TV series or, you know, or the, or the film. But, um, but no, I, I love that scene and I love the whole, his whole, what, what should I call this? I don't want to like say the wrong kind of thing, but in, he's within his right to be just annoyed with mm-hmm. the world. And how he's basically just saying to like, I like how he says to, to Sam, you know, don't... I know black man is ever going to be given the chance to be Captain America, and any yeah. black man that is shouldn't want it or something. Yeah, so along those like, lines. Yeah. yeah, so it's like it's like oh, shots fired, but it's like, but he's he's you, you don't he's right and for what he's gone through, he's completely right. You Absolutely, know, his life experience has led him to those beliefs, and I don't think I think he's perfectly vindicated in that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but I love that guy's performance, and I, I don't know if I've really seen him. In I don't think I don't... so. No, not that I can think of. Um, but I mean, it really, it's really good, and it just made me wish that there was more of it. Same with this episode. This, I mean, I've, I've, I wrote down going through it in my notes. Why wasn't it all like this? You know, why wasn't? I know yeah. they maybe not hadn't want to be quite as heavy handed with all of this stuff with the Isaiah Bradley storyline, but I feel like I could have had more of that peppered in throughout it. You know, it was yeah. sort of incidental, but again, it might be a COVID thing. It might be that they didn't get to you know revisit that house as much and stuff. And yeah, did, I'm guessing. <clears throat> I'm guessing there's a lot of stuff where they just didn't get to do exactly what they wanted mm-hmm. to do with everything or give it as much. So they've tried to wrap it up as best as they can, mm-hmm. and it works. It works for what it is, but. You can just tell they were like, it was just trying to scream out a bit more. It yeah. was just, he was in Doctor Sleep. All oh, right, after. okay. I've never I'm seen Doctor scared. Sleep. I'm too scared to see anything like that. But um, but yeah, I was I was thinking that as I was going through, and again, we've said this many times before. I'm not a black man, so I should probably just shut the fuck up. <laughs> You know, because <laughs> yeah. it's not for, it's not really for me to say. And if the black community and black men are happy with this, then that's fine, but I just feel he was just given short shrift, Isaiah Bradley. It just in this episode, anyway. I won't spoil too much about the next one, but I feel like the the arc that they they gave that story was was good. I just didn't feel like it was enough of it. Yeah, I thought no, it was sort of more incidental to the story than 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 pivotal. I would say, although it is pivotal because that scene changes Falcon's trajectory, doesn't it? So it does, yeah. It does, and not in the way you'd think. Like when when I heard what Isaiah Bradley was saying, I'm like, well, you know, again, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I was like, well, that's you told, <laughs> that's you told, sir. You know what not to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant um, scene, mm-hmm. like scene in his house and that, and I really, I really do like, I did like that. Um, but again, it's just what you just said, it's it just didn't feel fleshed out enough. Mm-hmm. And again, I think um, I think I said it the other week. You know, I could watch a whole series of, you know, Captain Not America trying to take the shield, and I could watch a whole series yeah. of Isaiah Bradley's story, and I could watch a whole series of the Winter Soldier making reparations and things like that, and I could watch a whole series of um, Sam coming to terms with everything post Endgame. Yeah. And yeah, I could watch a whole. I think we will be watching series about the blip. Right. But um, another thing I, I did like in this, in it's the Captain Not America story and how that unfolds in this one. Yeah. Um, and again, like we always do, I'm probably I'm trying not to bleed in mm-hmm. both episodes. Try to remember what's in what. Well, this ends with him forging his own shield. If that helps. <laughs> yeah. This is the one with his court case, isn't it? Yes, aye. Yeah, aye. So, um, so yeah, I, I love the whole start that when he's just like you can tell he's totally like everything that's happened to him is just eating him up, and he doesn't know where to go, he doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. He's talking to himself, you know, saying like I can't remember what he was saying, but like, you know, he made me do, or it wasn't my fault, or whatever he was saying, something like that. Mm-hmm. And then when Falcon and Winter Soldier turn up, you know, they're going, they're going to has fight. Aye. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're going to punch for a bit and then kiss. Yeah, <laughs> but I like how they're just like you know. Come on, mate. You know, well, you, you know what to do. You're gonna to have to speak to people. You know, they're trying to be. And he just he says something about the shield, and then mm. not Captain America's like, I knew that's what you're on about. He's like, no, he's not on about it, mate. Get off your freaking high horse. I actually just... thought that at the time, though. I thought, 
well, oh, they're really going after this fucking shield again. Just talk this guy down first, and then yeah. the government will take the shield off him. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't need to be the guys taking the shield off him. You need to be the guys talking him down. And that was, yeah. again, like, there's a few things that have felt rushed in this, and I don't know how much of it is COVID, but they've decided to release what they've released anyway. So yeah, that's what so I'm going to criticise. It no. is what it is. Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to criticise for what they've actually released, and, and it does feel a bit just stunted sometimes where yeah. I really needed that tension to be more some something else. The tension between those, I didn't really get it enough. I didn't really buy into... It just felt contrived. The whole tension yeah. around the shield felt contrived to me. And I could have done with a real reason for them to have this conflict, and then to re- yeah. and then I could have done with more of a reconciliation at the end. I think. And the thing is, the thing is with me, it was it was more of the fact that like I don't know why like Captain Not America, as we call him, is like he's so angry with the world, and I can get maybe why, but again, it happened so quick. Yeah, aye. He was he was he was the the Star Spangled Man at the start. He was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Second episode, you know, it's, he, he's you know he's trying to find his way. He's finding a little bit of stuff. Third episode, he's an arsehole. Mm-hmm. Fourth episode, he's killing guys with like for no reason. And then and this is just the anger uh-huh. in him. It's like it, it, it makes sense, but again, it just feels like the level of anger he's mm-hmm. at is just escalated quickly. See, I, it has, yeah. But I, I did actually feel a bit for him. Like it's like Jimmy the other yeah. week in Pride and Glory. I never thought. I would I would have sympathy for this guy because I just didn't like the character, but after his yeah. court case, I was like, "Well played, Wyatt Russell. That was a very good scene." Oh, it was brilliant! And yeah. and yeah, you're right. It was too quick, but I, I did feel a bit of it. Yeah, and again, what he was saying that was true. He's like, "You don't know what it's like. Mm. You know, you made me this. You put this Aye. on me, and so I can get that. But I don't think we saw enough of it." Aye, yeah. Um. And and then that that woman, what's her name? The actress's name? La Contessa and Valentina Allegra de la Fonte. Yeah, yes. A Val. That character annoyed she me. Yeah, don't call her Val though. She says. But, uh, yeah, don't call me Val, but do call me Val. I was like, look, just fucking introduce yourself, and we'll call you whatever, yeah. whatever it is that you want to be called. I did because they made a thing of that name. I did Google it as well just to see. I was like, oh, that's another one yeah. I want to Google, like Carly Morgan, though, isn't it? But and was it? Or maybe, I mean, she's just an agent. Julia Louise Dreyfus, her name is. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it felt like whoever, like that scene was written by someone who's not been involved in the writing <laughs> process for this series at all. It just seemed out of nowhere. Aye. And I just, it just annoyed me a bit. Who the fuck is she? I think a lot of that with this series, though, a lot of it feels like the, the whole fucking Zemo storyline felt like it was written by someone who, you know, was brought in way before they had an idea about what the series was going to be. It's like, write a Zemo storyline. There's a Zemo storyline. Like, okay, write the rest of the show, and then we'll just put them together. And like, what did that serve, Zemo? I've no idea what that did. Do you know? I don't. <laughs> I don't think they did. I mean, because he's off to Wakanda, but the, the Wakandans yeah. just said, well, we've decided just to look after him. So he's just gonna rot on a he's gonna rot on a jail cell. It's like, well, he was gonna rot on a jail cell anyway. Nothing's changed. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool to have him around. It's nice to see Daniel Bruhl. Yeah, you know, it's, he's a good good actor, good performance as per. But yeah, but apart from that, <laughs> you know what? Were you... I mean, he, he gets a he gets a good line saying he's forgiven the Winter Soldier. Yeah, he's like, I don't hold anything against what you had to do or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't. You can cross my name off your list. But, uh, Fine. <laughs> it's like they wanted to use him again, but I think, well, he's too small for the films. Aye. So, because the films are just big now. So, you know, we'll stick him in this. <laughs> um, yeah, Shifty Sharon, so he seems to be up to something. I did I did write down Shifty Sharon Carter before I'd seen episode five and <laughs> six as well. So, But yeah, again, the flipping, um, the flag flappers, as you like to call them. And again, I'm trying to figure out what <laughs> happens on what episode. Call them a lot of things, I do. <laughs> you can tell, like, some of them aren't really buying Carly's mm-hmm. cause. They seem, yeah. they seem a bit torn up. And again, I don't know which episode you see it more in. But correct me if I'm wrong, but nothing ever comes of that, does it? No one ever turns on her and says, fuck you, I'm not doing this anymore. No, that doesn't happen. I don't think so. Something does happen <laughs> in the next episode, but nothing like that. Yeah. Right. But no, um, yeah, just you can tell some of them are sort of like, this lass has lost it a bit. <laughs> I was just yeah. I was just a bit angry and felt like I wanted to do something good. I don't want to do this. <laughs> And I actually thought that the serum had, was having something to do with this. You know, when Captain Not America was 
having a bit of a turn, I kind of thought, oh, maybe maybe this serum is turning people mad. Maybe that's it. <laughs> no, but it's just she just seems again. You find out about it more in the next one, but it's like yeah, she's just she's too blinkered by her cause to see. She's mm. really you can go about this in a much better way. Um, Aye, and that conversation that Sam and Bucky have that feels like it should have been the whole series, but I don't feel like I was getting that. I don't feel like I was getting like the push and pull throughout the series of them coming together yeah. and you know pulling apart and stuff like that. They were doing it, but. Not in the way, the satisfying way that happened in this conversation that they have when they're tossing the shield about. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And and Bucky just puts too much on the shield. He almost, like I said, anthropomorphizes the shield. Yeah. It's like it's a character, a person. It's like, that's my only family. It's like, come on, mate. You're 300 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> At your age. At your age, 186. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah. But so, who was that French guy? Do we know? There is a name. Because I thought it was either guy that fought Captain America, actual Captain America, at the beginning of the Winter Soldier. Mm. Or am I just being French racist? Um, George... I think French racist is xenophobic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> George Batrock. Uh, I guess he was in the Winter Soldier. Right, so I, I, I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to figure out. I was like, I don't really recognise him from this series, though, because is he not like an MMA fighter or something? Like yeah, that? George Saint Pierre. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> Look at me, I, re- I remember the thing. <laughs> so, really good things in this episode, and it was set. It started pulling things together and setting things up for the finale. So, I'm quite pleased with this one. I was quite surprised. <laughs> let's see how what happens. Let's see what happens on the next episode. All right, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? I think so. <clears throat> okay, the fin- final finale, f- finale, rapid Three, refresh. Two, one, do it. Okay, so episode six, one world, one people. Sharon's joined IMF, but why wear a disguise if no one's looking for you? <laughs> Someone's farted in the conference room. Captain America is not on the moon. Maybe if the flag fuckers stopped spending money on fancy weapons, phones, and recruitment, they could just afford to rejoin the world? <laughs> So this CG action is why 80% of this series was in warehouses and empty cities then. I can see why now. One world, one people, one train. (laughs) Captain (laughs) Caveman has come for Carly. Bucky finally does a superhero landing. Sam pulls an old switcheroo. Walker makes the right decision. And Black Falcon saves the day. And we're back to the warehouse again. Um, And it was Sharon all along. Do, 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 do. (laughs) And then it's good night, whoever that French guy was. Not Cap and Bucky are friends now, and Shifty Sharon the Power Baron shoots Carly. Angel Cap drops in, and fuck me, this is actually about something. <laughs> Sam wants everyone to be in the room where it happens. One world, one kaboom! <laughs> Season 2, Val and US Agent is set up. Bucky confesses, Five, and then he's out on the prowl four, again. And then Cap three, makes an old man two, very happy. One. Then it's the end. That's the end. There's no need for any more scenes. <laughs> That is true. If they just didn't, if they didn't spend all their money on shit, <laughs> <laughs> on bombs and shit, like they would just be able to buy a fucking house for them all to live in happily. <laughs> I know they're trying to make a political thing, and what they're fighting for is technically correct. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's kind of what I was saying about the previous ones. Like Carly's just too blinded by the the cause; she can't really see. You know, yeah. she's too angry. She can't see. There's a there's an easier way. to get this message out there and do this thing. Because, yeah, mm. they, they've got a point. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they have got a point. They don't want world domination or anything. I was actually... I, th- I thought Sam's speech was brilliant. Maybe it's maybe slightly heavy-handed, I think. Mm. But, you know, it's ultimately about doing the right thing in the right way and affecting change from within rather than being a fuckwit about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was that his? Was that his big speech to like the the senator people? He, Can't he said it better than I did there. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he he would have said terms like "fuckwit" aren't helping anyone. It's like yeah. terrorist, isn't he? You know, <laughs> you know, calling people terrorists, but he's right in what you know. That's been an age old thing about America asserting their dominance over the world. You know, what do you look like to the people that you're mm. herding into? concentration camps and stuff like that yeah. to change borders around and things taking over their country what do you think you are to them <laughs> like good point uncle sam 
Yeah. <laughs> I do. I, that's one thing I kind of, every time his nephew said that, it threw me off a bit. And it's just like, because his name is Sam, that's fine. And they call him Uncle Sam. But then this is obviously, you know, Captain America, the whole yeah, the military things in there as well. It's just like, oh, stop saying it as much. Because every time they said it, I just like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk to talk about it seriously, though. How the fuck does Bucky's arm actually work? I had this in my rapid refresh, and I took it out and thought I'd just ask you as a question. <laughs> it's, I, it's, I think it's the answer with everything in the Marvel Universe, Stark Tech. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> but it's not like... But He's it's... like pulling on a thing, and it's only his arm that's super-powered, isn't it? Does he not have some kind of serum as well at one he point? He is serumed up, yeah. Yeah. But how does that work with his arm? It's not that arm, is it? It's that arm. It doesn't matter to the listeners, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using my right yeah, arm, cause... and I realise he makes a point of saying that he's right-handed and it's his left arm. That's it. So yeah. I apologise to Sean because I'm using the wrong arm. Because but... <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he says, obviously, the, the Wakandans have done something to it, haven't they? Because so, like, they can just got... pop it off whenever they want. Yeah. <laughs> So it's all kind of like mechanical, like all in stuff now and that. But it's the same though when I when I see things like you know people using prosthetics and that. It's just to me, it's amazing how they work. <laughs> it's just in general. But with this, obviously, it's you know it's super powered some way, isn't it? Or it's it's it's, it's got to have some kind of stock tech in there. <laughs> for me, for me it's, it's just more that whatever you're doing with that arm, it would just rip your body in half. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, he's got to have something in there to anchor with your it. Actual arm, <laughs> and you're hanging on to another thing with your other arm. Yeah, then at some point you're going to rip in half, <laughs> and it yeah. might be where the the fake arm joins your real body, or it could just be anywhere else. But I don't get the physics of the arm, and it's a superhero fucking thing. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about physics for because <laughs> it's way weirder shit than this. It's probably just the same kind of way how people can hang TVs on walls without ripping the wall down. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> I think it's maybe just because an arm is just such a normal, mundane thing that I question it more. I don't really question how the Iron Man suit flies or anything like that, do you? Know? Because I've got yeah. no idea how that could possibly or wouldn't work anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my weird, odd tangent for this one. Uh, but I do love what they do with Sam's wings and the shield and the action. I was like, because that's what I was on about with WandaVision. Like, I didn't like how they didn't really incorporate much of Car- Wanda's character into yeah. a power set. But with Sam, I felt like there's a definite progression of he's good with the wings and you see him training with a shield and then he's good with he, wings yeah, and shield now. Like, yeah. And you see him actually physically training as well. He's exercising, getting ready for it. And yeah, um, yeah, I like that. I like how it works. Again, it's all just a bit too. It just, it just like mind control this stuff. It's, it just be, it's so intuitive. You can just do whatever he wants to do. But I like how it because yeah, well, he throws that shield through the window to make his entrance, and then the yeah. shield is heading back out the same hole it came in. I'm like, come on. Very. <laughs> that would be. A, I don't even know if the angles work on that. But even if the angles did work, that's a one in a million shot that you've just made there. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it for it for for a metal was it vibranium shield? It's very rubbery. It's very. It bouncy. is bouncy, but I don't know what the properties of vibranium are, though. Is it bouncy? Yeah. Well, that's maybe a it's a rubber. type of rubber. Maybe it's like I don't know where it lands on the periodic table. Maybe it's you know. Partly rubberized, partly metal. I don't know what type of metal it is. Who can say? Not made well, it's made up metal. It's in the made up part of the periodic table. That's right. But that one thing annoyed me about the episode because it's like, yes, I get why, but how he's like, he asks his little drone thing to go and scan the helicopter to see if anybody knows how to fly. And, and lo and behold, someone knows how to fly a helicopter. That was convenient. I suppose they are all, you know, they've been promoted through the military and stuff, and that's how you end up in those positions, aren't they? So. Yeah, but then it's just, at the same time, I'm kind of like, yeah, but oh, that's a bit, you know, that's, that's very well done. Very, very convenient. It's like the like, Batman yeah, thing, and he's always got the exact thing that he needs on his utility belt for that situation, yeah. or James Bond, you know, <laughs> he happens to be given a watch yeah. that does one very specific thing, and it just so happens to be the very thing that he needs later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, though, because if, if it's sometimes if it's if you're enjoying something enough, it doesn't yeah. matter. Well, most of them it doesn't matter. But with this for me, because I don't, because overall, because I was kind of liking this a bit more than you uh-huh. were to begin with, I think. But I kind of got a bit. And yeah, if we switched end, every now, because I really enjoyed this. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was. I mean, I liked it uh-huh. overall. 
But I think I was just kind of getting a bit. I, th- I think it's because I was wanting a bit more out of it, and th- so things like that were sticking out to me. And I was like, "Oh, that's convenient that she happens to be there and she can fly." But then another bit where he says, "Want to count down to five or whatever," then you need to jump straight away and get the controls. And I was thinking, he's probably the best one to count to five. And she starts counting. Yeah, I know she starts <laughs> counting. I'm like, let him count. He didn't tell you he was ready yet. No one said they were ready. <laughs> this needs to be orchestrated and timed perfectly. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the guy's flying the helicopter. He's, uh, why? Is, why are you counting to five? What is she doing? <laughs> nobody like, nobody turns out. She just goes one, two. No one needed to. No one needed to count to five because all he needed to say was when the pilot disappears, grab the stick. <laughs> just get yeah. ready, and when the pilot the pilot's going to disappear, you don't even need to know how or why. I don't need to fly beside yeah. you and wave. All you need to know is the pilot's about to disappear, and when he does, you need to pull up on that stick. It didn't even really need to be someone who could fly a helicopter. I could have pulled up on a fucking stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, air traffic control could have guided me into land. Yeah, probably not though, because <laughs> helicopters are notoriously difficult to fucking fly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I get your point. <laughs> I get what you're saying, but that's the thing. Yeah, so little things like that were starting to miff me a bit. So I didn't want to mention it in my rapid refresh, but there is an extra scene after the Isaiah Bradley one. I'm like, just finish on that. Finish on that scene. Give him his due. Like that's a really good scene to finish the series on end there end on where he fucking hugs Captain America black Captain America and there's tears coming from his eyes because he stood in the Isaiah Bradley portion of the Captain America museum finish there don't put on some cheesy that that last scene was absolutely fuck all don't know we didn't need it Mm. And then the post credit scene, Shifty Sharon the Power Baron makes a very private phone call in the worst public place. Yeah. <laughs> like she's outside the building where she's just been given a full pardon and said, you're back in, we'll give you a job on the inside. And then she makes a phone call yeah. telling all our terrorist mates. Yeah. They're not terrorists, what are they now? Dickheads. Yeah. <laughs> all our dickhead mates that, that she's going to get them information and stuff. It's like, wait till you get home, love. Some some government guy pops out for a smoke and hears her planning world domination. He was like, you know, you, I don't want to trust you as my evil overlord. You seem, you don't really seem to have it. Very clever, is she? <laughs> I like how they've they've turned her though, because it makes sense. It's a, it's a villain that makes sense now because yes, she has been wronged by her country. She's been and she's been sort of like just all the stuff she's done in the past, kind of forgotten about, and she's been like they've turned her back. They're back on her. I mean, yeah, now they've you know, okay, sorry. But it's like all oh, it's it's a little too late now, you know. It's like yeah, you've 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 done fucked up. So she's gonna be annoyed with the world now and kick off. And that's the thing, though. It's just like her and Carly kind of have the same sort of journey down the dark path, so to speak. Mm-hmm. They're pissed off with the world. But I was starting to kind of buy into Carly Morgan, though. Yeah. And then they just kill her. And then I know they'd mentioned like a power broker, but to be honest, I'd forgotten all about a power broker until this. I think they might have mentioned the first three episodes and didn't uh-huh. mention it in four and five, and then yeah. they reveal it in... Because they were focusing on Carly Morgenthau, I was like, right, they've shifted, they've they've focused on their villain, or maybe they were just trying to misdirect us, I don't know. Yeah, It's not as good as WandaVision anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a shame because it really could be. Yeah. It could have been. And I don't know why I was surprised at it being so political, because Captain America has always been political, so I don't know yeah. why that took me by surprise, but it did. And I do like, because it's not hitting you over the head, you know, women are the bad guys now, mm-hmm. and the heroes are black. In it, It's very obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what it is. It's on the screen. That's what's happening. Um, I think... It, it would have been easy to be even more heavy-handed with that stuff. Aye, that's sort of what I was meaning before when I thought, well, maybe they hadn't wanted to make it, because I did feel that it was short-shrifted with the Isaiah Bradley story, but maybe people would have complained if, they were, if they'd been labouring in every episode. Maybe I would have complained, I don't know. Mm. I don't think I would have. This did feel more yeah. organic. And even, even that here is me saying it felt a bit heavy-handed at the end with his speech, but... Yeah, because again, because it's like what he was saying was right. Like maybe some of it was maybe rough cheesy is the right word, but a bit too obvious and a bit too. Yeah. But it could have been a lot. Like it could have been literally someone popped it on screen with a sign up saying "Look what we've done," <laughs> but it yeah. wasn't. Um, and I, I like how the plate did it. Just it seemed organic, like you said. It seemed 
it didn't matter that but the two big bads mm. were females. It didn't it it didn't matter. They didn't play on that. It just so happened that's what no, it was. No, and that's the way it should be. You should just people should just get cast in roles and no matter what genitals they have or what you know <laughs> exactly. colour the skin might happen to be, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah, tell a story. <laughs> Obviously they changed they changed, obviously, because Carly was Carl in the comics, or oh, wasn't it, or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, the change went over, but it's like, it didn't matter, because it's not like the, I don't know, say, for instance... No one gives a fuck, because no one reads comic books. <laughs> yeah, because no, that's what I was trying to get at, yeah. It's not like they've got, like, Black Widow, isn't it? They'll, we'll make them Black Widow work. Uh-huh. And it's not like they've got, like, you know, they've decided to make, let's make Captain America uh-huh. uh, female. I know they're, kind of, they're doing it with Thor, aren't they? They're bringing female Thor into the next one. Yeah, aye. But Thor's been a frog before, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, they've, they've changed it, but it, it it's not as obvious because no one really knows that character. And Sam just, again, he just happens to be a black man. His skin just happens to be darker than Chris. But it is, but it is making <laughs> a good point about how, you know, black people are seen in America and things like that. And oh, His hell speech, yeah. I thought, Definitely, you yeah. know... I don't live in America, so it probably will resonate yeah. better with people in America, you know, and it will resonate even more with black people in America, I would imagine. You know, so again, I'm not this person to be making the criticism of this, I don't think. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, so I think, you know, Isaiah Bradley got a bit of a short shrift, but Sam's work at the end of it with his speech, him becoming Captain America, mm. and that whole arc over the last two episodes kind of makes up for it, I think. And it's actually made yeah. me want to read Truth. So I'm probably now going to buy and read Truth, because I think the only Captain America book that I've read recently has been The Death of Captain America, which I think I mentioned, which is a really good Falcon yeah, did, and yeah. the Winter Soldier team up one because Captain America dies and they go and try and find out who kills him. But yeah, because I, I do like how he, if you think about what Isaiah Bradley's been saying mm-hmm. to Sam all the way through it, Sam just he pretty much, he, he takes it all in, he understands why he's mm-hmm. saying it, he listens to him, but he kind of just to, completely ignores him at the same time. He's like, I don't care what you say, you deserve, you know, you mm-hmm. deserve your story to be told, you deserve recognition, you don't want any of this, but I don't give a shit, you're getting a statue, <laughs> you're getting a, you know, you're getting your own little sort of yeah. thing in a museum, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be yeah. a black Captain America, even though you said mm-hmm. we shouldn't. I'm doing it. But here's the mm-hmm. one thing I was going to ask you. Do you think he should be Captain America? Or not because nothing to do with skin colour, nothing to do with anything like that. Um, but just, like, I don't know, for me, because I thought I think his, his visual is awesome, how he keeps his wings in the only... And I, I was thinking something like maybe the American Eagle or something like that, or like American Falcon. Oh, maybe you're right. I say, yeah, hi. American Falcon, ah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a good name, but I think it's probably right. Given what happens, and you know the latter end of the, you know, given what we just talked about with Isaiah Bradley, yeah. I think it's right that he takes over the mantle of Captain America because he's earned it. I think this series does do what it sets out to do, and it sets him up. It's a really expensive recasting of a character, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Basically, it does set him up to make those choices and to show that he does have the strength of character of a Steve Rogers. Yeah. You know, which is why and non Captain America didn't work because he didn't have. But I don't know what he is now. I mean, I know he's U.S. agent, but I'm still kind of questioning: is he even fully a good guy? Well, I think he, he kind of turns, but his turn is too quick. You know, they yeah. accept he gets a nod from um, Captain America, yeah, but he gets a full pat on the back and a bit of a banter with Bucky and stuff. So Bucky's yeah. like fully turned. He's like, ah, I've done some shit as well, mate. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> But he's still very sort of bitter and very mm. angry, and he's still sort of like maybe it's something they can play on in the future. Because I, I, I've heard that there's going to be another series of this, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I also heard that there's going to be a Captain America four film. Right. And the weird thing is that um, Anthony Mackie found out on the internet when the news broke, so he wasn't even told there was going to be a fourth film. Oh, right. <laughs> so. What's happening there? Like, have they just like? Because apparently, even though he's gone now, apparently Chris Evans has still got one film in his contract. I heard that um recently that Tom Holland found out that way as well about being Spider Man. Like his mates text him like, "Have you seen Twitter?" <laughs> he was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Marvel just have form of this. I suppose it's the best way of stopping your secrets being leaked, isn't it? Is just don't tell the cast anything. <laughs> that's one. That's one good way of doing it. Um, <laughs> Whether Evans is coming back or what, or maybe it's going to be Evans' story 
going back through time, taking all the stones back or whatever. I don't, I don't know. know, yeah. Um, I suppose there's a lot you could do with it, because like I said, like jokingly in the rapid refresh, Val and US Agent could be the next series, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I think yeah. Bucky's, Bucky's pretty much sorted now, you know, his arc is complete, I think. it. Oh, well, yeah. uh, certainly, anyway, his arc at the beginning of this throughout is complete. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. what, what we all thought it was going to be was Falcon... Sam coming to terms with taking on the mantle of Captain America and, as you said in one of the earlier episodes, the weight of the shield, taking on the weight of the shield. And yeah. It does. So that is what's happened. So maybe it is like a whole new cast of characters. Maybe it's US Agent and Val going up against Sharon Carter because, you know, remember, Sebastian Stan and um, Anthony Mackie, those are movie money wages to be paying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe like a little Wyatt Russell and that woman, you know, um, Contessa de la Fountain woman or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, they'd yeah, maybe cheaper that, to pay. That, yeah. And, a, you know, a Peggy, maybe. not Peggy Carter, Sharon Carter. Yeah. I like how, uh, do you like at the end or the end credits, they came up saying Captain America. And yes, I did soldier. enjoy that. I hit. But again, it's the same thing that happened with WandaVision. Like, finish it at the WandaVision house when they say goodbye to the kids and each other. And yeah. with this, finish it in the museum. Stop tacking shit on the end. <laughs> they started the whole end credit thing, so they have to do it. But not everything needs it. But if it doesn't add anything, in fact, yeah. it, some of these things took things away because the last scene didn't add anything and it actually took away from the impact of have an Isaiah Bradley in the museum. What what they could have done is um, one division could have after that yeah, at the house said goodbye. She walks away. Credits. End credit could have been a little hint at Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. and then at the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier a little low key post credit. Mm-hmm. That's what the films do. Aye, I did, I wouldn't have minded one division's post credit scene in the in the shack. That's fine because that's a continuation of Wanda's story. Yeah. That adds something and it leads into where you're going with that character next. But either way, though, even still, I'm still intrigued by what we're going to see next. I'm still intrigued by that. I'm still intrigued by what's Sharon going to do now. You know, so it is good. It's just sometimes it does go away from like the big emotional sort of payoff. Well, as I always say with series, it very much depends on you coming up to the last two episodes and it all hangs on for me, whether they've paid off enough of what they've set up and whether they keep enough going to keep me intrigued. And as much as I didn't really like a lot of the setup in the earlier episodes, I really fucking enjoyed this payoff. And there is yeah. enough there to keep me- to maybe make me interested to watch another one, but not necessarily enough to make me want to come back and see another whole series of this because I feel like this story is now done. Take it into the films, new Captain America. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the thing that sort of all boils down because the other story's done. But I think, even though I know we always say, you know, review what we've got, but I think that it, it, it is done, but it could have been done longer. Obviously, maybe yeah. COVID did play a part. But I think that's going to be an issue with a lot of the series going mm-hmm. forward because I heard today, before we started this actually, that Ms. Marvel just finished shooting um, their series that's coming up at the end of the year. And it's only six episodes as well. And that's only six episodes for a character we don't know. And I worry about that with Loki because I feel like Loki's the kind of thing that could have been really fun, could have been really interesting. Oh, are we going to lose something? Mm. We didn't lose too much of WandaVision. You know, we had a lot of WandaVision, so no. I, I feel we lost one episode. But that episode was cut before they even went into production, I think. So that's okay. But if we're going to be cutting down 10 episode series down to six, we are going to miss a lot on a lot of stuff. We are going to feel like we're lacking. I don't know. I think She-Hulk might only be six as well, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, because it's like these things that I'm interested I want to see She-Hulk because I don't really know much about She-Hulk. I'm not even sure what Ms. Marvel's about at all. When is What If? I really want to see What If. Well, there's a rumour that that might be getting pushed to next year. Oh. <laughs> I'm really interested in that because the first one out the gates is um, Chadwick Boseman's final performance, isn't it? It's it's What If yeah. T'Challa was Star Lord, which I think is just great. It's a mental. Oh, they released the, the they released the title, didn't they, for uh, Black Panther Two? Yeah, Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever. Yeah, good title. Good title. They released some character posters for Black Widow as well. Yes. And there's that um, black leather jacket guy that no one knows. <laughs> Did you see that one? I didn't know about going up and looking at it. <laughs> Just search black leather jacket guy. <laughs> um, black Widow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that guy, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> just a guy, like a, an unnamed actor. No hints as to what he is. He's just... I, I know him. Not personally, but I know him. Do you? Yeah, I think he's a British actor, I think. Um, <laughs> he's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> dad? O.T. Fagbenley. I'm probably not said that right at all. I don't think so. <laughs> not until you should, you should have said that, sure. <laughs> well, his first name is just, it's an O and a hyphen and a T. So I'm guessing I've got that right. He's in a dog. Uh, uh, that's how I'd pronounce that as well. But yeah, it's like, but yeah, because I don't even think I've seen him in the in the trailers for that, but it looks awesome. I really want to watch Black Widow. I've been waiting for it for ages. So should we wrap this up then? Or? Yes. In in conclusion, <laughs> I, I, I liked it. it. It's a good series. I don't think it was what I was want, like hoping it would be. I like, not hoping. That's the wrong way to say. It. I don't think it, it. I just. I don't know what it was. I just thought it'd be something more. I think that's what I can kind of take away from it. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. The 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 dramatic sort of emotional points of it, the political side, like the way they do that kind of stuff. It hits you where it's meant to hit you. It makes you think. Mm-hmm. Um. And I like how the the evil, the big evils were just people with a cause, and not like let's take over the world with our superpowers. Yeah, you know they're pissed off, and you can understand why they're angry. They're relatable in a sense. Maybe, like I've said, maybe not the way they go about stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I like how you know we kind of mentioned the other week that we thought Bucky might end up being Captain America. <laughs> yeah, that was wrong, it makes, wasn't it? <laughs> it? And it makes perfect sense that it's Sam. Ah, so, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> Aye, I just I just predict nonsense just in case I'm right, but there's very little chance that I'm going to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I liked it. Good show. And whether it was to do with COVID or not, I don't know. But I do feel like something was holding it back a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really odd. Um, I didn't like most of it, but strangely, have the last I did like the last two episodes, and consequently, I wanted yeah. more. <laughs> and- so that doesn't really fucking make sense as a review, does it? So I'll just I'll just leave on that. Thanks everyone for listening. <laughs> and if you didn't listen this far, fuck, fuck you. you. <laughs> um. If you want to get in touch with us or let us know what you like, what you don't like, give us any suggestions as to what we should watch, what we should watch next, anything else we should do, um, just get in touch with us. You can email us at w.a.f.f.l.e.p.o.d at gmail.com. We're on Facebook at Witty Analysis of Feature Films and Light Entertainment. We're on Twitter at Waffle Podcast One and YouTube Waffle Podcast. And as we always say on this... Is vibranium made of rubber? And if so, can we make condoms out of it? <laughs> Because that would be fucking safe, wouldn't it? What's your condom made out of? Vibranium? I'll fuck you then. (laughs) That sounds great. Goodbye.